Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Awaken the Wonder. I am excited here to be joined by my guest, Nancy Brown today of More Ministries. They're doing all kinds of amazing things in the kingdom of God. And Nancy has been in ministry for some years, has been a missionary, uh, they, uh, as a mother of nine kids and has been uh, really a, amazing uh, in adoption and brought in many people uh, to mother. And through that, they've actually mothered and fathered with her husband, Mark, many, many children uh, through all over the world because of it. Um, but uh, Nancy, I'm going to be talking to her today, specifically in this episode about some of her, uh, the way she is seen in the spirit. Her eyes have been opened. She grew up uh, around the occult and has had many crazy experiences. Many might say new age, many might say mysticism, many might say, uh, you know, things of the dark side, whatever it may be, but she's, she had a radical experience and has come to the Lord now. And so she still sees in the spirit, but now she sees things from the Lord's perspective as well as other times. So, uh, it's going to be a fun conversation today. So Nancy, welcome to the program. Hi. Thank you for inviting me, Caleb. It's nice to be here. Yeah, and um, I'm excited to be here on location in North Carolina mm -hmm. at um, a place that's near and dear to your heart. So it's very exciting to be here. The beautiful um, Apple Hill Lodge in Moravian Falls, North Carolina. Definitely, and I highly recommend it if you want to get away. So you can definitely check that out. Um, Nancy, just right off the top, if people want to follow you and stay connected to you and your ministry, where can they do that at? Well, they, uh, we have a website. It's www.moremoravianfalls.com. So you can get on there to find us. Um, we do. I have a partner in, in ministry, Susan, and my husband and her husband. But we do conferences and um, just we do a lot of healing ministry, deliverance, and just give us a call. Get on the website and give us a call. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So I want to talk to you about uh, how you came to Christ. So we got to go back a little bit. And uh, you're, as I understand it, on both sides of your family, mm -hmm. uh, the occult was just part of what you did and That's how you grew up. That's what you did. My grandfathers both came from the old country. I'm only second generation off the boat, they call it. Uh, my one grandfather was uh, Eastern European. So what he would do if somebody had a problem or a sickness or something, because he came from the village and they didn't have doctors or healing, he would draw circles and pentagons and put candles around and say chants and spells and pray until somebody got healed. Now, now he was an Orthodox Christian, but that's how they practiced healing. It was really witchcraft. My other grandfather on the other side was also a Christian from Holland, but he practiced divination, which means whenever he wanted to find water to dig a well, he used a stick, a brand new, he, you cut a tree that has two branches. And when the tree quivered, then that meant the tree knew there was water and that's where you would dig. So they actually actively practiced witchcraft. Wow. And growing up, we did the tarot cards and the horoscopes and even in, in school, in high school, um, there was this one girl that another girl didn't like. So she just made a little doll and got a piece of her hair and taped it to her and stabbed it a few times. And the other girl got very sick. It was just something you did. I mean, in youth group, we would practice levitation and, and have seances and call on spirits. It was just a way of life. It wasn't a cult, but it was a way of life. So you didn't, you didn't know anything else. That was just that normal was, to you. That's normal. Yeah. So for those that think this world doesn't really exist and it isn't even there, what would you tell them? Oh my goodness. Well, you <laughs> too. <laughs> it's definitely real. It's definitely there. And I'll tell you another story. Um, there was a spirit that lived in our house. And it had, my mother was second generation in the same house. And that spirit had been there since she was a child, but uh, it lived specifically in my room. Mm. And it would be just, you would just feel the presence of evil and you would just talk yourself out of it. No, 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 this can't be true. You're not here. If you're really real, make that thing get up and fly across the room. And whatever thing that was would get up, hover in the air, fly across the room, hover in the air and drop. It was real. I saw it. I knew it was real. But after a while, and this when is while you were a child. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, after a while, you begin to think you have control because you say get up and move and it does get up and move. So I was convinced I had supernatural powers. 
Wow, that is that is fascinating. Now, I travel the world doing gospel campaigns, mm-hmm. and so we go into many cultures, and the supernatural is not a, a question. In American culture, a lot of times it's like, oh, that doesn't exist. But over overseas, everybody goes to witch doctors. They go to all the different religions. They do all the practices. They do the seances. They wear the charms and the fetishes and the amulets. And it's just a way of life mm-hmm. for many others. But often in America, we don't hear the way of life type thing from people we might see as an American person. So it's fascinating hearing your story and that this stuff is real and active. Now, did you ever see anything good as a child before Christ? Um, Was, did you see Jesus? Did you see no, the angels? Did I, you see? No, 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 no. I had a very strong, um, I guess, looking back discernment. I mean, I could feel the presence of evil very easily. Did you know it was evil or did yeah, it just feel uh, normal? The, the so, hair on your arms. Even though you were The back of your Christ, neck, you knew. you knew this wasn't good. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So take me through your journey then. So how did you, because you said Orthodox Christian. So obviously there was some awareness of Christ or God or whatever it may have been in your family. Well, Christians can practice witchcraft and a lot of them do without knowing it. But um well, when I was young, I had a Sunday school teacher, and by young, I mean 12 or 13, um, who told us that if you wanted to know that you know that you know that you're going to go to heaven when you die, you just ask the Lord to just, you know, tell him that you want him to be Lord of your life and that, uh, you know, you want to have this feeling, this born again feeling. So I just thought, okay, I want this because the, the dark side didn't, wasn't what I was looking for. It was, I was trying to escape it. Um, I went home and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and nothing happened. And this teacher had said, knock, keep knocking, he's going to answer. So I, next night I prayed and prayed again. And the third night, and isn't it interesting that it's the third night? Yeah. <laughs> On the third night, I just, I was, a ch- you know, halfway between child and adult. I felt this warm, warm, glowy feeling. I had my eyes shut. I felt like I was floating. I was in the air liquid love. It was so wonderful. I was so excited. I said, this is it. I ran downstairs and I said, mom, mom, what is this born again experience all about? And she said, today is Tuesday. Sunday is for God. This is Tuesday. Go to bed. Wow. And just crushed me. I mean, I just didn't know who else to turn to. I didn't have a mentor. And that Sunday school teacher, that was her last time because they were moving. And you know, I was experiencing the supernatural, but I didn't even know it. So you continued to, to grow up? I just continued on being a kid in school. Wow. But when I was in college, I had some friends who were seeking after the Lord. But I had grown up in the church. That wasn't necessarily unusual either. So I st- we started looking after the Lord, looking, excuse me, seeking after the Lord. Well, and so in that experience with your friends, you end up running I, after him and giving your life to the Lord again, going yes. back to him. Yeah. And um, getting married, I told my husband that, you know, I wanted to marry a Christian and he told me I was in luck because he was one. So we got married and just like that. And we, yeah, but we grew (laughs) at that point in time. We still didn't know anything about, we, we knew we wanted to be Christians because it was the right lifestyle. It was the lifestyle I wanted. When I grew up, my mother, my aunts, my grandmother, they could all see dead people. That wasn't the life I wanted. That really kind of frightened me. Yeah. Now, when you came to Christ, you still, was there this awareness of the spiritual for the good, for the Lord, for the things of the Lord, or was that still absent? Well, you know, I was aware of it. I had read it in my Bible um, and I wanted it, but the church that we attended, and we thought this was really progressive, um, was a Pentecostal church, and they taught us that speaking in tongues was the epitome of the spiritual gifts. And so, I mean, we did, we spoke in tongues, and and we said, what about prophecy? What about healing? What about miracles? And we were taught that even the great healers wanted to speak in tongues and never did, and now that tongues has come, this this is the highest you can go. So it really, in a sense, it almost crushed you again from pursuing Pursuing other things. Wow. So you end up uh, going to a conference. Uh, Really, your hunger drove you to a conference, right, where you go and you you go for a week and you and your husband 
just get immersed in this culture where there's all these hungry Jesus lovers that are full of the spirit and, that's, and, and there's more. Is, is that? Yeah. That's, that's basically it. But what happened was we went, we just had a heart for the Lord. We went on the mission field um, and we started seeing miracles, but we just didn't have a paradigm. We just, we, we, there was a lady with a goiter the size of a, a, a bowling ball on her neck. And my associate pastor said, we have to go pray for her. I said, Sure. Okay. So we went and prayed for her. The next day, my associate pastor brought her over, brought over this lady and she was just normal. And I said, how, hi, how are you? And who is this? And she goes, this is the lady you prayed for yesterday. And we were like, (laughs) no, that can't be. And another young woman was, um, oh my goodness. She was so sick. She was dying. She was in the hospital. She was this tiny little girl, but she was swollen up so big, like an like an elephant laying there on the table. It was just, ah, it was awful. And finally the the doctors called in the family. They said, she's not going to make it through the night. So my associate pastor said, well, we have to go pray for her. I said, okay. Cause I mean, for me, praying for somebody is, you know, Lord, please heal them. So, so she drags me over to the hospital, Mark and I, and, um, they wouldn't even let us in. They said family only. So I said, okay, well, you know, we tried. And she goes, no, 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 we're here. We're going to pray. We stood outside the, the hospital and we prayed. And the next morning that girl went home healed. And I was like, maybe they misdiagnosed her. I don't know what was happening. We were seeing miracles. This was in Mongolia and I didn't have a clue. So this whole time. How can this be happening? (laughs) You're being used powerfully (laughs) by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit. He's leading you into all these places You've had a crazy background with seeing all of the dark side and knowing that it's very real. Mm -hmm. And now here you are walking in the light and you still don't even know what the light's doing to people. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So we, after three years, we came home and I, you know, I told Mark, Mark wanted to go back. I said, I'm not going back without the power and the anointing of the Lord. And that is when we started seeking. And that is when we actually ended up coming here to Moravian Falls. There was a gentleman named Gary Oates at that time who was holding what they called the Transformation Summit. So you would come for a week in the company of Bob Jones, Bobby Connor, Larry Randolph, Gary Oates, Mahesh Chavda for a week. And the, you know, the lodge only held the conference center only held 40 to 60 people. So you wow. spent a week with these people. By the time you left, you were just immersed. <laughs> so you, you got just, it. You got it. You absolutely got it. Now, it was when wonderful. you when you got it, I'm mm-hmm. just curious because you knew how evil the dark side was before. Absolutely. Did you know how bright and po- powerful the, the light side was, so to speak? Well, I had been growing closer and closer to the Lord. And, you know, it's a journey. It's not an event. It's a journey. And um, no, it's been awesome and fun. It hasn't been because, you know, when you start the journey, it's kind of like, well, for me, it was kind of drudgery. Now I have to read my Bible. Now I have to say prayers. And all of a sudden you're into dreams and visions and interpretation and, you know, the fun stuff, the good stuff and this, the joy of the Lord, you know, you don't know the Lord till you know the joy of the Lord. Yeah, that's good. Now, have you continued now to see in the spirit? Yes. And now you actually see things of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. What has that journey been like for you, for your eyes opening to that? Well, it, once again, it's a journey and you have to seek after it. I've heard somebody say, um, salvation is free. The rest you have to work for. <laughs> and it's, it's true. Salvation is free. God loves you. Ask them into your life. But the rest, you do have to work for. You have to spend time seeking after him in prayer, learning from other people and, you know, asking the Lord, please open my eyes. Help me see. Please help me to interpret what I'm seeing. Please, you know, the closer you get to the Lord, the more humble you have to be and the more dependent on him you have to be. So for those that are saying, I've been a Christian for 20, 30, 40 years. I've been pursuing. I've been seeking. I've never seen anything. (laughs) What kind of advice would you give those people and how would you encourage them? Uh, Faith and trust. I, I knew the supernatural was real. So I knew that it was real. Some people, you know, I don't know, maybe looking for it and don't necessarily believe in it. It, They may be frightened of it because they've never experienced it. I don't know. I, I cannot really give advice except 
he's, he's knocking on the door for you harder than you're seeking after him. Wow, that's so good. Nancy, again, where can people follow you? Um, www.moremoravianfalls.com is our website. Awesome. And there's a number of things there people can look at. Yes, they can. And we have, we have a, um, a Facebook page also, but you can find that on the, on the website. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much for those that have been uh, listening today to Awaken the Wonder. We encourage you again to make sure you subscribe. I'm going to be coming back to you tomorrow with part two of my conversation with Nancy. And uh, she has a powerful story that you're not going to want to miss. Uh, she's adopted uh, or has nine children and has adopted many of those. And uh, there's an incredible story you're going to want to hear. Uh, somebody was almost left for dead with all of the symptoms and problems they had. And yet God used them powerfully to save his life. And so I definitely want you to hear that. Make sure you come back tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe. Leave, uh, leave a rating there and a review for us. And for those listening on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more from Awaken the Wonder. God bless. We'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to Awaken the Wonder. If you enjoyed today's show and want more ministry like this, please visit kingdomencounters.us where you can find weekly blogs in my latest book, Hunger. Be sure to subscribe and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at the tag Evangelist Caleb Wampler. If the Lord leads you to partner with us in the nations in prayer and giving, visit kingdomencounters.us. I'll see you next time.